Greetings, greetings, greetings. How's it going, brothers and sisters? Um, somebody had requested that I do a video on the new age, you know, and how it's <clears throat> affecting everything. I'm sorry. I had to pray before I got on here. I want this thing to go smooth. I wanted to be very informative. And it should be. Listen, I want y'all to come on. Come on in. You got to take this in. I'm going to put a bunch of script, scripture references in it. Scripture references. What's, up, what's going on with my tongue? Scripture references in this video. I want you guys to take all of them down. I may not be able to read all of them. Um, I believe I'm going to try to put a link or a file in the description to um, maybe download. And this is my first time doing it like this. I may do it like this. It's pretty good. Um, so please listen. Try to listen to the whole video. Um, it's it's going to be stuff throughout this whole talk, um, including uh, what God kind of gave me this morning. Um, I'm not keen to say God told me this or God told me that. I believe the spirit speaks um not audibly but to your inner being it speaks because you get information that you never knew um i believe that comes from god so i'm gonna start with this <clears throat> right before i woke up this morning i felt something tell me to name this video the eye disease and I, not the word I, but I in single, like I, myself, um, the letter I. So, um, kind of spoke to what the new age is. Um, it's a self-righteousness. Uh, it's something that you try to establish on your own, you know, and I'm going to start with my outline. To let you guys know what I got. Um, what is the new age? Let's give you the definition of it. Uh, it's a broad movement characterized by alternative approaches to traditional Western culture. With an interest in spirituality, mysticism, holism, and environmentalism. Okay. I want to go back up to the word broad. It's a broad movement. So we know what the Bible says about broad stuff. <clears throat> you look at Matthew uh, 713, it talks about the way um, of which way the way of life, which is narrow to life, which is narrow and the way of destruction, which is wide. It says the gate broad is the way uh, that lead to the destruction. So we already see right now that this way is going to be really popular, which it is. Um. And whenever you see something popular, the stream going this way and everybody's following this, this uh, trend, that's a, that's an indication that you may need to hold up, you may need to hold up and check and see if you need to be doing this thing that people are doing. I'm going to try to move this along because this is a lot of information and I want you guys to get all of it. So that's the definition. So I kind of broke it down. I got the definitions of inside the definition of spiritualism. Which is uh, like it could be communication with the dead. You know, you hear people talk about vibes and chakras and, you know, people using energy crystals and things like that. This is the new age. This is stuff that you may want to stay away from. And if, you, if you're in it, you may want to come out of. Next, you got mysticism, which is you hear people saying they're woke. Um, you know, people that use black magic or any type of magic. Uh, that is mysticism. Then you got holism. This is a big one. Um, it's like the treatment of the whole person. You see it in the doctor's offices and stuff now. Um, they talk about holism and wellness and things like that. You hear these this terminology. This is holism. Um, we see it in society, man. Um, you hear people saying, your health is your wealth. You know, the, the, the Bible tells us that exercise profiteth little. 
And it's not that the stuff that goes into a man that defiles him, but that which comes out of him that defiles him. So we listen to this eye disease. We see this thing and it's the total opposite of what God is. Continue to keep that in mind. It's the total opposite of what God is. You hear people say that, right? Your health is your wealth. I mean, it's a good saying, but we need to depend on something else. We, we can't believe that we control our health and our wealth. That is controlled by an entity that's greater than us, and that's God. Okay? I'm going to try to keep on with, with what I got, and I want you guys to take it in. Even, you know, environmentalism, which is the ideology of nature, you know, and you want to take care of nature kind of more than you want to take care of yourself and everything, man. You, you're thinking about environment, you know, and how this is affecting that and how we can live in, you know, this thing. You know, you see people talking about um, being overpopulated, the world being overpopulated, people like Bill Gates. Uh, they talk about stuff like that and what needs to be done about it, which y'all need to check it out and see what he think, think needs to be done about it. Um, so with this thing, you know, I call it the eye disease, this title, but I had a couple other, um, names that I had one, which was a new, the new age deception, which is, is very deceptive. I'm about to give you some history on the new age and everything too. Just gave you the definition, but I had the new age deception, a false gospel, which it is, and the new babble. Um, also this coexist movement, you've heard people talk about coexist or you've driven up behind people that had that symbol, that little star symbol with all the little, um, religions like put together. All of this stuff is the new age and it is antichrist. Okay. I'm gonna keep going. So I kind of broke down each one that I said, the new age deception, the deception is, I wrote down the deception has been conditioned heavily within the past 50 years. This is stuff that I wrote now. I wanted to kind of keep it nice and neat. In the 1960s and 70s, we can look up, you know, places like Woodstock. We have seen how the people act in the psychedelic movement and people smoking and doing mushrooms and things like that. And people were going to school and college <clears throat> and, you know, learning about things besides God. They was learning, you know, philosophies and and things and you know it kind of screwed their minds up people who believed stopped believing you know they fell away and they started doing these things this new age stuff it began in like the the 70s 60s and the 70s and it's been rolling ever since you know that's the new age deception the false gospel i kind of kind of keeping it rolling um in the 80s and the 90s we start to hear hear, hear this term name it and claim it you know, it was a more of a prosperity gospel more than, you know, people really believing and trusting in God. You know, they took out repentance. They took out all the things, you know, like obedience to God. And they put in this material, materialistic thing of name it and claim it or the prosperity gospel. You know, people wanting to do this thing, which is a false gospel. It's not about material uh, to God. It's about the spirit. We have to be reborn in the spirit. You know, we have to prosper in spirit. Yes, it's good to prosper, you know, with things of this world, but these things are going to vanish away. So we got to focus on more of the spirit than anything. So if you have been in this name it and claim it gospel, this prosperity gospel, that's something that you need to come out of. You know, if you've been in any other philosophies, you know, Buddhism and all of this stuff, Hinduism, um, Taoism. Um, you know, Confucius, all of this stuff, man, you got to come out of that stuff. God don't want us in that stuff. Uh, it's not the truth. It's of the devil. Okay. It's man's, uh, knowledge, which is foolishness to God. Okay. I'm gonna go on to the, the new Bible. Now, if you look at the two thousands coming up to the two thousands, um, we began to get into the information age, you know, with the internet and things like that. And we could see all these different cultural um, religions and interests and stuff like that. And you see this big spread or a big thing with people 
like they're going to the buffet, they take out things that they like, you know, meditation over here, um, uh, you know, a little Buddhism practices, a little Taoism, a little, um, uh, you know, incense burning, you get your African things from over here and you make your own thing that suits you. So this is what I wrote about it. I said the new Babel that took off in the 2000s to the present um, in this age of information. Just as in Babel, knowledge was increased to the point that God had to confuse their languages because he knew men would create and do gross evil and wickedness or much evil, much wickedness, which you saw. Um, they they disregarded God. The, the, the city of Babel, the Tower of Babel is a symbol of rebellion. It's a symbol of um, stubbornness uh, and unrighteousness. So these things, when you see people grabbing or if you're, you're even doing it, you know, sage burning and you say you're a Christian, that comes from another thing that's not Christianity. You know, if you see incense and doing, you know, certain things that, you know, comes from a different culture. Um, or practice of faith, it shouldn't be mixed with Christianity or I don't even like to say Christianity, but that's, that's, that's the term everybody knows, but it shouldn't be mixed with people who follow Christ. Okay. So God knew the wickedness that would come from people mixing all in. That's why he wanted them to disperse in Babel and they never dispersed. You know, they all tried to stay together, build their own tower up into heaven do their own thing, which is the thing now. People want to do their own thing. They want to establish their own righteousness. And we see that today. Uh, please continue listening. Continue. I got to say this. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe, like the videos, you know, put the comment bell on. Not comment bell, but notification bell. So if I, you know, create new videos, you guys will see it. Um, like, I'm young, man, just like. This generation, I want to speak to my generation. I want to speak to you guys and give you the truth, give you knowledge. That's why the page is Hosea 4.6. My name is Hosea. Uh, Hosea 4.6 in the Bible is saying that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And I named the page Hosea 4.6 Fix to help fix that situation of us not knowing something. So I'm just trying to help enlighten myself and you guys. And I hope, hope that this channel is helping. Okay. So people try to go about to establish their own righteousness these days and their own happiness. You hear people saying, do what makes you happy. What makes you feel good? You know, um, you hear people telling you that there are many paths to God. When God says there's only one way that he says he is a door. Jesus Christ said he is the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the father, but by him. But you hear people today saying there are many ways, many ways. That's not the way of, of, of following Christ. That's not the truth. And it's not of God. If you if you hear that and if you believe that, I'm telling you the truth right now. And I'm, I'm going to give you scripture and all this stuff to show you you're not in the right place. And that you need to leave these things or it will destroy you. The Bible talks about, um, you know, people that are in witchcraft will be destroyed. You don't want to be destroyed. OK, you don't want to be destroyed. So I'm going to come on down. It says I, I, I did some examples, you know, do what makes you happy. There are many paths to God. Uh, it's what you feel uh, that you need to believe in. You know, whatever you feel like doing, that's what you need to do. And what, if it makes you happy, do it, all this type of stuff. Uh, and then you got people that say, you know, my truth against your truth and this and that and the other truth has to be real for everybody in order to be true. Can't be my truth. Can't be your truth. It can't be his truth or her truth. Um, it has to be a standard. And we have a standard. That standard is the Bible. The Bible is the word of God. The Bible's uh, in the Bible. In the Bible, it says that the word is the truth. And it is the truth. If you read it, that's why people get mad about the words that are in the Bible. It's it is an offense to people. Real truth offends people sometimes. 
real truth scares people sometimes. When the doctor gives you that news, it tells you, man, you got to have surgery. You got this thing growing. It scares you sometimes. A lot of people run from the truth. A lot of people don't want to hear the truth. Not knowing that the truth will set them free. Not knowing that if you hear the truth, say if you had something in your body growing, they catch it early. They get that thing out of there. They gave you the truth. You took it. You used it. Okay. Not just hear it, but you did something about it. You followed up. You went to the doctor. They took that thing out. Now you're healthy and you're going to live a long time. It's the same way with the Bible. This thing, it extracts bad stuff out of you. It extracts it. Just like a doctor cuts stuff out that's not supposed to be there. This Bible cuts out what's not supposed to be there. It talks about it in Hebrews. It said the word is like a two-edged sword. You know, it divides asunder soul and spirit. And can even separate the marrow. So this thing cuts out stuff that you don't need. If you let it. You have to consent. You have to follow up. Just like you would a doctor. You have to follow up. Do the things that's in this word. And they could save your life. Literally save your life. Not only save your life. But give you life abundant. In Jesus Christ. Let me keep going. I'm about to be off topic. Um. Be, we, we don't have our own truth. And I, I wrote down, I said, I referred this to believing on the first Adam. OK, which is the one that was born and, you know, created in the beginning and not the second. This, this talks about this. The second Adam is Christ to those who know. And I wrote down scripture references for all of these things that I'm talking about. You can go find this out in Romans five. Um verses 12 through 20 a lot of people uh, have been saying that they wanted me to read uh, these things so I'm going to give you a little bit of it okay Romans 5 let's go to Romans 5 hold on hold on hold on let's make this big let's make it big okay Copy options. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Quick nav. Here we go. Romans chapter 5. I don't know. It says a lot to read. So I don't want to make the video too long. Um, I may skim and do. And I want you guys to read the rest. Okay. Verse 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man centered, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. OK, it says, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. So there was no law before. Uh, Who's that? Moses, you know, up to Abraham, up to Moses, there was no law. So sin wasn't imputed. OK, listen, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Who is the figure of him that was to come? They're talking about Jesus Christ. He was a figure. Adam was a figure of it for, uh, was a figure of Christ. Um, but not, it says in verse 15, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one man be dead, much more the grace of God. And the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, with abounded unto many. I mean, hath abounded unto many. I'm, I'm, I'm really messing stuff up with this reading. But that's how, and you can continue to read that. I'm going to continue to kind of move through uh, the lesson or this, 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 um, this uh, study, okay? So we can make this short. And I'm going to give you guys all the scripture references um, to kind of go look up. OK, I'm going to scan. I want to scan through some of them, though, and show you that this stuff did occur in the Bible. Um, these practices that you see, this new age, um, the Bible tells us that there is nothing new under the sun. These things used to happen uh, back in the day, and it's resurrecting itself again today. And uh we see it big time. So let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 28. 
Well, you know what? I'm just going to give you this one. So I'm going to give you reference. I want you to go look up first, first Samuel 28 and you got verses one through 19. That's a long way. So I ain't going to read all of that. Okay. I'm going to read the ones that are kind of short, but I will leave all the scriptures in the description. Go to Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19 in verse 26. Okay. It says, it says, ye shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall ye use enchantment, uh, nor observe times. So people who do horoscopes, you know, and things like that, that's something that we shouldn't practice. And I want to, I'm going to do the ones that I highlighted <clears throat> because I want to get, get some important things across before this is over. I don't want the video to be too long and I hope you're still listening. Hope you're still listening. Please be listening. Okay, we're going to go to, well, I'm just going to hit the, the strong, the, the, the ones that I highlighted, okay? And y'all tell me uh, if this is not today. So, let's go to 2 Kings. 2 Kings. Uh, we're going to go to 17, chapter 17, verse 17. <clears throat> I wanted to show y'all something. It says, and they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire. Now, this was human sacrifice. People were sacrificing their kids and used divination and enchantments. Look at this. We still see divinations is like spells and things like that. Um, and, you know, worshiping the dead and conjuring up spirits. And sold themselves to, to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. I highlighted this to highlight that, you know, in abortions, they basically burn the babies and they cut them up before they burn them, which is horrible. Um, today, people are practicing um, worship to idol gods, the idol god of Baal and Molech without even knowing. When they're doing those abortions, because they're doing those abortions, mostly research 90, 98 to 99 percent of people get abortions out of comfort, out of um, convenience. And that is basically worshiping Molech or the idol gods, Molech and uh, Baal. I wanted to point that out. I'm going to go to another one. Go to First Chronicles 10. First Chronicles 10 and verse 13. This is what it says, 10, 13. Okay, this is uh, describing what happened to uh, Saul. It says, and Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord. I'm going to give you a brief synopsis of what this is talking about even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not. And also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. So let me tell you what, what um, Saul did. He actually went to a, um, a person with a familiar spirit to raise up Samuel from the dead or speak to the dead, which is divination. Or we see it mysticism. You can count it at all um, as all of them in this new age. People talk about talking to their ancestors and things like that, right? You know, God forbids this stuff. And you can read about it. You can read about this stuff in in um what is this? Um what's this? First Chronicles. I got first chronicles chronicles 10 13 right here. But it talks about it in Second Kings, I believe. Uh, 21 and 6 um, and there's a whole story about this uh, I thought I put it down but I didn't write it down but it's a whole story about you know Sam, uh, Saul going to uh, this lady and she bringing up Samuel's spirit which is against what God wants us to do it's, uh, it's witchcraft we shouldn't do those things 
are accessing the spirit realm illegally. That's what that is. And God isn't for that. So if you're doing that type of stuff, come out of it. God wants you to come out of it. Okay, I'm going to go to another one. We're going to go to Isaiah 47. Isaiah 47. And I'm going to read 10 through 14. We can read these. Okay, 10 through 14 says, For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, None see thee. Uh, none seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. So you get people, I wanted to read this because you get people saying that they're gods. Um, and we know that in the Bible, the I am is God himself. But you got people today proclaiming that they are God. You know, that they... I, you know, people, man, we have to wake up and these people have to wake up. I'm going to keep reading. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. <clears throat> Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth and mischief shall mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. <clears throat> you get people. I want to say this. <clears throat> man, we know what's going on. I can't read. I can't talk. The devil don't want people to know this. But you get people saying, you know, spirits are attacking them. You know, stuff is coming coming to them in their dreams and all of this stuff. They feel crazy things. It's because maybe you've invited this witchcraft man into your life. You've invited these spirits into your life. Anybody that's practicing the Zodiac, even the Zodiac is forbidden. Because it's, uh, it's the times. Uh, worshiping the times you know we look at different dates different um uh, months and that is the times you know we aren't supposed to do that so we have stuff on us and we don't even realize it oh uh, you have to leave this stuff okay i'm gonna keep reading and mischief shall fall upon thee thou shalt not be able to pull it off put it off and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly which thou shalt not know Stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of the sorceries wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. You know, some people be talking about the Zodiac and they, they claim Virgo, Cancer, all of this stuff from their youth. Leave that stuff. We have to leave it. If so, be thou, be thou shalt be able to profit. If so, be thou mayest prevail. Okay. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators. That's what I'm talking about. Monthly prognosticating is the zodiac. Stand up. Let them stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. So we get people that read their zodiac. They read their signs and they say, oh, this is supposed to happen to me this month. But some totally opposite will happen. You know. You, you can't trust in these things. It says, behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit before it. So we got to leave this stuff alone. I'm just giving you scripture. Uh, we see in Acts 8, uh, 9 through 24, this story of Simon the Sorcerer. You guys can go look up that. In Acts 13, 6 through 12, Elimus, the sorcerer, he was stricken with blindness for trying to hinder uh, the gospel. OK, we look up. We look at Acts 16, verse 16 through 18. Um, and you see the damsel of divination, you know, and she gets that spirit cast out of her by Paul. OK, then you go to Acts 19. I, I highlighted this one, too, because. A lot of people now are getting all of this knowledge, right? And they want to increase in knowledge to do these witchcrafty things, to do spells and magic, black magic and stuff like that. They bought all these books um, to learn all these evil things. And this is talking about it right here. I want to read this. I know my reading is horrible today, but I'm going to read this. 
and y'all can go read it back for yourselves and, you know, get the understanding and everything. Acts chapter 19. We're going to go from verses 13 through 20. It's talking about um, a, a scenario where people, they basically went uh, and burned all the books that they bought, you know, and they had a lot of them, all these witchcraft books and spells and things like that. But listen, then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists took upon them uh, Jews, exorcists, hold on. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, then exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preached. Let's look at that. So these people that don't know Christ, they're Jews, vagabond Jews, they aren't. In, in relation to Christ, they are of the old uh, covenant. They're not in the new covenant, which is faith in Jesus Christ. They see Paul, them doing stuff in the name of Jesus, so they think they could do it too. And they do. But these spirits hop out on them because they don't have the spirit of God in them. It says, and there were seven sons of Sceva, um, uh, uh, seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of priests, which did so. So it was seven people that did this and the chief of priests. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. But who are you? Ye. And that was it. it says, and the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on. Leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them. So that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. So that thing beat them up and stripped them naked. Whatever it was that came out because they didn't have the spirit of Christ. They tried to do things illegally. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling in Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and shewed their deeds. So they shewed or showed their deeds. Like, man, I, I've been doing this. I got to quit doing it. After these things were, were ended, Paul proposed in, in the spirit. P Paul purposed in the spirit. Goodness gracious. When he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to the Jerusalem. Oh, I don't read all, all, all. Did I read all of it? No, I skipped. Many of them. Okay. Dang, I skipped. It says many of them also which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces, 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevail. So 50,000, that's a lot of evil that they were practicing. And they burnt all of that stuff. They had to get rid of it. So, we see, we see, man, that um, this stuff we have to we have to not give in to get it given to this new age movement of you know divination, black magic, tarot cards, reincarnation, all of these things that aren't of God. We see in Hebrews reincarnation is real. Um, you see the scripture that says, I wrote the scripture down. Uh, it talks about, um, there's a point, um, to man wants to die. And after that, the judgment. So there's no reincarnation It's judgment afterwards. We don't reincarnate. We, we are judged afterwards. So the solution to this man is to not take on your own righteousness. Christ is our righteousness now. And I'm going to give you the, 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 the scriptures to kind of go look at. This video has gotten long, so I don't want it to go on any longer. Uh, so if you go look at Romans 10, 3, uh, it talks about how our righteousness, uh, our righteousness is nothing to God. You know, it's like a filthy rag, basically. Uh, so our righteousness don't, it's, it's not anything to God. We have to um, use the righteousness that he has given us. And that is through Jesus Christ. So, um. 
I'm going to give you the scripture references and I want you to go kind of look them up. Um, and I got scriptures talking about our righteousness. Um, if you look at Proverbs 16, 25, Proverbs 30 and 12. Um, I wrote down the scripture right here for the reincarnation people that think we're coming back at something else or something like that is wrong. Uh, Hebrews 9, 27 um, for astrology, zodiac and numerology. Go to Deuteronomy. Four, uh, fifteen through nineteen, um, and it says, uh, I wrote down right here in Proverbs. I mean, in Romans, chapter one, verses eighteen through thirty-two. I talk. It talks about how God will give people up to their own unrighteousness if they don't listen, if they don't adhere to His word. So that's Romans one, chapter one. Uh, verses 18 through 32. Go read that. And then it talked, we, I looked up the verse um, of our own heart condition, right? How our hearts are evil. And we don't even know. And that's Jeremiah 17, 9. Go look that up. Go look that scripture up. Uh, so the righteousness that is not our own that we must seek. I want you to go read uh, Romans 3, 21 through 26 Romans chapter 3 verses 21 through 26 then you got Romans chapter 5 verse 1 and Romans chapter 8 verse 1 so that's homework for you guys hopefully you finished the video man it felt like I messed up a lot with this reading hope I didn't make the video boring or hard to understand um but new age basically is a self-righteousness we have to drop our self-righteousness and take upon the righteousness that God has given to us, which is faith in Jesus Christ. We have to take upon that righteousness. We have to believe the gospel, which you can find, I think, in, is it 2 Corinthians? Uh, let me see. 2 Corinthians. No, it's not 2. Is it 1 Corinthians? Let's see, man, I, first Corinthians 15, one through four. I know I'm making this thing super long. I'm sorry. I'm looking at all these notes and everything like that. I just want you guys to get all this information. I don't want to be messing up stuff or making this boring, but yes, first Corinthians chapter 15, uh, chapter 15 verses one through four kind of summarizes the gospel. I do believe people need to be baptized. Um, I believe people need to repent. I need. I, I believe people need to believe the gospel. First, believe the gospel. Repent of your wrongdoing, knowing that you're a sinner. I believe people need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And I believe people need to follow. Follow and obey his word and his commandments. Um... And I believe, you know, on top of that, believe in the gospel. That's that first Corinthians 15, you know, uh, one through four it talks about the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So I ain't going to prolong this video. We have to not establish our own righteousness, but take on the righteousness of Christ. If you're in the new age movement, I beg you to come out of it have to come out of it. If you, if you want to be right with God, come out of those things. If you're following Christ already, but you're doing these things, man, it's time to drop it. Leave those things alone. Leave them to the world. Um, it's time to come out of idolatry. Come out of paganism. Come out of idolatry. Um, come out of wickedness. Come out of all of this thing, the, these things that are not of God. Uh, thank you guys. Um, I thank you for listening. If you've listened to the whole thing, I appreciate you. Like I say, uh, like the video, comment. Let me know if I miss something or mess something up. Uh, I need your feedback. I need that feedback from y'all so I'm, I'll know how to do these things uh, in the future, how to get information to you. To the people that want to do Bible study, that's going to happen. 
I want to do a live Bible study. I think I want to do it every maybe every Tuesday night at seven. We're going to see. Also, I want to tell you guys, <clears throat> I'm kind of partnering up with the One Source Network. You can even you can find their uh, channel on this channel. Um, I'm going to be broadcasting a lot on the radio. So I want you guys to be in tuned and stay tuned for that. It's going to be great uh, with my brother Greg and his wife. Uh, good family, good family, good brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, or good brother and sister in Christ. Um, what else I got? Um, I'm just going to be trying to push these videos out to you guys, try to get you as much information, as much scripture as I can. I know somebody, uh, um, commented that I should leave more scripture references and stuff like that. So I'm trying to do that. Um, also that Bible giveaway. I'm still going to get, I got a couple people that I want to give Bibles to. I'm going to be honest. I don't have the funds, man. Oh, I want to give them to so many, everybody that come in it. I want to give them, give them that Bible. Um, but I can only send it to a couple people right now. I said I was going to do one, but I want to do about three people. Um, uh, man, I just love you guys. Pray that you be blessed. I pray that you go read these scriptures. Um, I pray that you, uh, come out of some things that you may be in. Um, I'm praying tonight and right now inwardly that these things can happen. I pray for this video. I pray that it reach whoever it needs to reach. I know it's going to reach whoever it needs to reach because God is going to have you see it. So I thank you guys. I pray that you be blessed spiritually uh, in Jesus name.